Thank you, thank you, Sakina and Leanne and uh, to your viewers. You, you said to us jokingly um, before we came to the interview that your dad was married to four women. So having both of us conduct the interview is, 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 is easy play for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a very easy play for you because my father was married to four women. I can handle uh, ten, I can marry ten. Oh, so I'm so glad. It, it's good to hear you're in, in high spirits um, after, after what has happened. I mean, obviously, this is, it, it's devastating to you and the communities that you serve. Uh, talk to us about how you're feeling about what unfolded last week. Well, it's a bad feeling, you know, as you know, that, you know, our economy and our country was segmented into three spheres. Um, uh, the first one was, you know, urban area and township and rural area. And the people segmented the area want you know, the economy to go into the urban area only. And what happened is that, you know, uh, when I saw that after 1976, I said, you know, we need to establish, you know, a, a, economy, a township economy that will serve, you know, our people. And our people, they work in the urban area and they travel to go and buy goods. And I felt that, you know, that cannot be right. You know, we need to bring facility to uh, a, a doorstep of the people so that, you know, uh, we change the mindset. Because, you see, what has happened is that uh, um, uh, uh, the apartheid regime has created a mindset that, you know, anything that was supposed to be sold in the township will be of inferior quality, even though uh, those things were coming from the same port. I can give you an example. Take back beans. And our people would think that, you know, the uh, baked beans that would be sold in uh, uh, Santin will be of the quality. And, you know, um, uh, 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 the one that will be sold in uh, the township will be, will be uh, uh, of, you know, uh, you know, not a superior, you know, a, a lower quality that, you know, uh, people would buy for it. So those kind of things, you know, uh, made me to push the uh, township economy. And it was not an easy journey. We had to make sure that, you know, we convince, you know, the tenants to believe in the township economy. And we were succeeding up until this thing, you know, uh, starting to happen. Because we were you know, a city on the N12, which was going to be called, you know, my city. And uh, we're currently on site in a, a rural area called, you know, Guzana in Leko whereby, you know, we are on site. We have started, you know, with the uh, a city there as well. So we are gradually winning. And uh, this thing, you know, once you set us back. But, you know, I'm hopeful and I believe in this country. We've got a beautiful country with a lot of resources, which needs, you know, uh, leaders like us and visionaries like us to forge ahead and make sure that, you know, we create jobs for the need. Mm. Tantankuna, how did you hear about... Uh, the looting uh, last week, uh, and and what was the first thing you saw um, when you actually went out to check on your properties? You, you see, uh, you know, I'm a church goer. By the way, I'm a, a ZCC member, and you know, uh, coming from uh, the ZCC church, you know, uh, ZCC church is more of a spiritual church. I could feel that you know something is not right. You know, I decided, you know, to wake up. Normally, I wake up and pray. Uh, sometimes I wake up three o'clock and pray, and I could feel that you know I need to go and pray. And I then realized that you know there's something happening, and I decided to drive to uh, uh, Jabulan. And as I was driving to Jabulan, I could see that something is not right. And we tried to go to the police station to alert the police, uh, only to find that the police, when they realized that you know there's problem, our police uh, they were so scared you know they had to close the gate and protect themselves. And uh, when I then drove to a uh, Protea land, I also find, you know, a, a, a funny situation because, you see, the section of the root uh, uh, butchery uh, was, you know, on fire. And I had to arrange the community and, you know, the fire brigade uh, nearby to come and extinguish that fire. So this kind of thing sometimes happen. You know, uh, being a visionary, uh, you always have a feeling that, you know, something is not right. And uh, you go to it and, you know, that's how it came about. You know, one of the, the, the frightening things that you said was that the, the township economy was something that you are passionate about, you invested in, you wanted to see it grow. Um, 
access to people living in the areas was easier. I, I mean, these malls were absolutely fantastic. And now, you know, they're a, they're, they're a shell. Are you going to keep going in the direction that you had initially started? Because we've heard of a lot of people who have said, that's it. We're never going to invest in townships again. Do you share well, this view? Uh, or are you different? No, yeah, definitely, you know, I, I'm different because I still believe in that economy. We still have to build our own cities. We still have to have our plan as black nations. We cannot say as blacks we are totally failures. And if we do that, uh, after God has given us some uh, uh, God's talents, which is brains and vision, and we say we can't use it, we have failed the nation. You know, God doesn't give, you know, those kind of brains to everyone. It, there will be those ones who, that are chosen. And I believe I'm one of the chosen. And uh, we're going to regroup and, you know, continue. We'll talk to uh, the tenants to come back. At some stage, I was saying that, you know, maybe let me wait for the insurance to pay out and go out uh, in uh, Busana or Shitelani, where I come from, and go and retire there and eat my money. So I said, no, I'll be a coward. I can't do that. I believe I'm one of the leaders that you know, are here to serve the country and will be able to serve this country through creating jobs mm. and will be able to uh, uh, convince. Uh, of course, you know, we'll need the support of government to come side by side with us and say, how do we assist? It mustn't be a situation whereby you know, government says, you know, we'll stand at the distance and say we don't care. They are servants of people like us. Yeah. Now, business people, we are servants. And politicians, they're supposed to be servants. You cannot be above the people. You have to humble yourself to the level of the people so that the people can believe in you. I was so humble uh, when I went to Jabulani again. And the people, they are busy signing petition to say, we are going to sign a petition of about 10,000 people to say, we are going to protect this establishment if you... Uh, uh, regroup and uh, refurbish them and protect them. Even if, you know, government fails, you know, to uh, 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 protect, like, you know, they did, you know, as I was telling you that Jabulani police station, it's uh, on the front of, you know, the <laughs> So, uh, we must say failure of the government, failure of the people, people have got power. So, uh, uh, that's what I can tell you. Mm. We are going ahead we are going to rebuild. Uh, yeah. What happened? You know, it's a, a it's a one step back, but it's going to climb ten steps. You know, above. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and and as a leader, um, which you clearly are, Dr. Nguna, uh, there've been different explanations uh, to explain the causes of what happened in South Africa last week. Uh, I'd love to hear what your thinking is around that. Well, uh, I've. Given an indication of what happened in 1976, you know, and uh, what happened in 1976, it, it's almost the same as what happened. The difference is that, you know, 1976, you know, people, they were fighting for apartheid. And uh, the ANC then, you know, they had, you know, to come with, you know, a plan of destruction because they didn't have guns. And the plan was, you know, uh, to fight with the enemy, and the enemy was government. So the idea, there were things that were built for blacks, like beer halls in the township, like, you know, uh, people were not allowed to own houses in the township. So uh, the government will build houses uh, of which, you know, at the uh, month end, you know, they'll have to go and, you know, pay rent. So those facilities, they were targets. But you see, uh, the ANC-led government, uh, 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 organization then because they were not in government. Uh, they had a, a, a good instruction that, you know, things like library and schools because they are going to help us. They mustn't be banned. And black business, they mustn't be banned. So it was an, a clear in instruction. And at that time, you know, I was running my father's butchery at Shawel. And we were not even affected. So uh, this time around, it happened whereby, I don't know, whether I shall call it that, you know, the leadership lack, uh, there was no direction as to what needs to happen. So, unfortunately, I cannot talk on behalf of the politician. I can only talk as a businessman because I'm a businessman. I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, through my whole life, I've never benefited from a tender. 
you know, mm. I, I am one person that believes that, you know, I want to inspire a youngster that, you know, they can do it without a tender. It doesn't mean that, you know, uh, 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 when you want to go uh, to business, you have to go and befriend the politician so that you can find yourself in a corrupt activity. You don't have to do that. You can still yeah. make it as long as you have plans. And, you know, I, I, the way, you know, I, I had some, you know, plans and vision, like, you know, I normally say, you know, wh uh, when I started, you know, I used to go to Joburg and admire something uh, at Carlton Center. And I said to myself, in my lifetime, I'll be able to build, you know, a high-rise building such as, you know, a Carlton Center. And indeed, in my lifetime, I've built Masingita Towers in Santi. So you can see that, you know, if you have vision and work hard towards those visions, you know, things will come your way. That's amazing. It is amazing. I mean, yesterday I spoke to uh, two individuals, but particularly one that I think has stood out for both of uh, Sikina and myself, of a small business owner. And he had, you know, almost thrown in the towel and just said he, he can't do this again. It was a small business. He invested everything he had into it. And now, you know, he, he just doesn't know how he's going to get through it. And, you know, it leads me into my, my question in terms of, of, we said it in the introduction, the University of Johannesburg, um, on giving you the, that honorary doctorate, um, it, it conferred it in the context of rural development as you meet a need in, in areas that are mostly affected by poverty, joblessness, lack of basic services and, and other social ills. So the big question and two of the points that were highlighted by most of, most, both of my guests is that Government do not assist people with small businesses. They make it so hard to jump through hoops that are lit with fires and do all these, these things to just get a little bit of assistance. But, but going forward now, in these desperate times now, what do government do? How do they help? Because it can't just rest on your shoulders as an entrepreneur who has now lost so much. What do they do? Well, uh, uh, currently, you know, uh, the government is starting to realize, and I'm glad that, you know, uh, the president visited, you know, uh, Jabulani Mall and some other malls in Soweto. And uh, uh, this is the time where government has to identify people like myself and other people that are visionaries in uh, different, you know, areas of business and try and find, you know, how do they support them. Take, for instance, you know, uh, there's this guy called Jack Ma from China. Uh, uh, Jack Ma, you know, when he started his business, he had a vision in his class of, you know, 28, where he was a teacher. And uh, government, when they presented their vision to government, government, you know, realized that, you know, he's going to create a lot of jobs. And government uh, supported him. And today, Jack Ma, he's the biggest employer in the whole world. Mm. So similarly... Uh, uh, with us, you know, there are business people that, you know, are visionaries uh, that can create jobs in this country, but government, you know, wouldn't support, you know, uh, those businesses because what they'll do, being politicians, they'll support, you know, their friends. So uh, some of us will stand at a distance without being supported by our government, but see, we're calling upon them to come and support us. We are there, we've got vision. And I'm happy uh, where uh, I come from in Lipombo. We have started with the city, which, you know, we have invited, you know, uh, the premier to come and, you know, do the soil training. And after we have presented, you know, that development to the premier, the premier said, you know, this development worth to be a catalytic uh, development. And also here in the uh, uh, we've bought a land of about 130,000 uh, 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 hectares. 130 hectares, not a thousand. Um, and uh, the premier of Houting is also helping us. And he feels that, you know, that development, because you see, it will come with, you know, shopping center, uh, uh, other things. It will be, an, you know, uh, uh, inclusive, you know, development, which will have factories and uh, hospital, car dealership and uh, residential units. Uh, like the way, you know, Santin started. By the way, Santin started in 1970. I was there. It was a farm. But look how Santin has developed. So it's high time that, you know, we as black people start uh, uh, developing uh, things that, you know, will be identified with. Not only, you know, changing names. Uh, I'm not saying that names mustn't be changed uh, because they are changed for political reasons. But you see, uh, history won't change. 
you'll change the name, but you see, history will remain to say uh, Cape Town was started by so and so, uh, OR Tambo was started by so and so. That's history. So we must start doing something that you now will be able to identify blacks. So fortunately, some of us, we are here. We believe we have a, a, a servant of the people and we can do it. Mm. Dr. Nkuna, we're out of time, but as a sports lover, uh, you're a shareholder and a director in Kaiser Chiefs. And, uh, you know, we, you must at least be in high spirits following uh, the fact that you managed to travel with the team to Morocco. Well, uh, look, I'm sitting in a hotel in Morocco. Oh, wow. In Casablanca. I'm enjoying myself. You can see how bright am I and <laughs> chilly. <laughs> the planning was happening in Soweto. I said, no, no, let me go and chilly. <laughs> and, and some other people thought, you know, I'll be sitting with strength. You can see I'm uh, in high spirit. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's so nice to chat to you this Absolutely. morning. It really is. Yeah. What an inspiration. Thanks, Doc. Thanks so much for being with us here on the program. And enjoy the, the rest of your time um, in Morocco. And we look forward to you coming back and rebuilding, as you have said. Um, it's not going to get you down. So thank you very, very much. Thanks very much. You know, I'm there to support my country because I okay. love my country. And if you don't mind just giving all of the players from Kaiser Chiefs a big hug. And if you feel like kissing them, you can go for it as well. <laughs> Tell them we still love That's them. from Sakina. <laughs> Please. I, 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 them. I won't them. Okay, fair enough, online. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mike Nkuna, the executive chairman and founder of Masingita Property <laughs> Investment Holdings, reflecting on the damage caused to two of his malls in Soweto and, and how he plans to pick up the pieces. What an Amazing, inspiration. Eh? Gee, you know, I don't know if one I'd be day that. when we get back to normal and we can have guests in studio, we must get this man into studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so he can tell us his life story. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Lovely. Are we able to put tweets on our door?